church was built centuries ago, still service. Now, even with the electrical connections, the compressor and cryonics capsule, I think this probably will be the best place for the service, don't you think, Reverend Dawson? I suppose. You have no objection to a service without a burial? No. Now, I have officiated at many such services where the body is usually placed in the family crypt. But none, I think, quite like this one. Well, that's true, but strange as it may be, I do recall you did caution me last night. Yes, I did. But I don't think I told you about a service without a corpse. Mr. Desmond, you did say your wife had died. In a sense, that's true. In a sense? If her remains are in this capsule... A cryonics capsule, Reverend, where the remains remain undisturbed. Inside, an electronically controlled environment ensures an absolute temperature. Now, if even the movement has ceased, life is still in a state of suspension. Do you see my point? Frankly, no. A person is either alive or dead, according to God's will. Except on this island. I'm not with you, Mr. Desmond. You will be. And so will Erica when she returns to me. Even though you and God consider her dead. You mean you deny God, as well as scientific fact. Your wife was declared dead. Cryonics will make that a contradiction. I read some time ago that the body of a man was found frozen to death after a blizzard. No heartbeat, no respiration, no blood pressure. Medically, he was dead. But when the body was thawed out and artificial respiration applied, the man's heart began to beat again. God's will, Mr. Desmond, and a medical miracle. In that order? Exactly. I'm after the medical miracle. It wasn't until 30 years later that the man died for a second time. 30 years, Reverend Dawson, a soulless corpse like a zombie. I have no belief in zombies. And I have every belief that Erica will one day be returned to me. Are you all right, Mr. Desmond? Oh, couldn't be better. I suddenly feel as if a load was lifted from my mind. Don't let a miracle become a fact in your mind. They seldom occur. Reverend, you are a theologian, trapped by your own logic and teachings. And you, a man, chained by your lack of logic. Those chains can be easily melted. When you run out of answers, look to the fire god. He's got some new ones, new for even you. The devil? Surely you're not advocating a satanic belief? <laughs> I don't advocate or procrastinate. I live and let live. Fair enough. May we get back to what we were discussing? Oh yes, life, death, which we touched on both. Your wife's burial service. I'm not sure I can conduct it for a woman whose husband refuses to accept her death. Reverend Dawson, if God builds a stone that is too great for even him to lift, that's a mountain. Why make a molehill out of it?
Erica's Little Death Diary. Oh. You know, for an immobile soul, a lovely woman and a dearly departed, you sure cause a lot of action around here. <laughs> well, keep it up, my sweet. I haven't had so much fun since one of my colleagues fiddled while Rome burned. Now, let's see. Who gets burned next? Holly, hello. You can't keep running, Holly. Please don't. It's a reflex reaction. Whenever I see you, the friendly warden. You make Wesley House seem like the, the black hole of Calcutta. You want to see my bruises? I've got a heart full of them. I know how difficult it was for you. It was. It is and always will be until you and that dear mother of mine leave me alone. I thought what we were doing was for your own good to keep you out of trouble. And what have you planned now? An extended vacation on Devil's Island? Holly, you've made mistakes, so have I. I'm ready to admit mine. That's why I followed you down here. I think you owe me the courtesy of five minutes. That's not asking too much. I don't owe you a thing, Reverend. Okay, I'll give you five minutes. From... Now. First, your mother and I are not in a conspiracy. In fact, she hates me almost as much as you do. Oh, I don't hate you, Reverend. I just hate the things you do. She hates you? Oh, come on, Reverend. I thought you and she piped the same tune. We're completely out of harmony, I assure you. And what brought you to Mel Jardin? You. I told you. What for? To set me straight or send me straight back to Wesley House? Because I thought you might need me. Need you? What for? Protection. Guidance. Maybe even comfort. You can use all three, Holly. I can use freedom. Which means the right to find my own comfort. You're right, of course. Which is why it was so difficult wrestling with my conscience. Obviously, your conscience lost the boat. <laughs> Let's call it a draw. To ease the wrong you think I forced. I decided that to correct it would be the only way to show how you've misjudged me. No contest. Come off it, Reverend. Go back and fleece your flock. Perseverance is a minister's stock in trade. Perseverance for good, I mean. Yeah. And what about thinking out for self-gain? Where does that come into it? Now you sound like your mother. Oh, she reads you too, eh? I didn't think she had it in her. What'd she do? Use that as a threat to get you to tell her where I was? Your mother didn't learn anything from me. Well, I'm learning things minute by minute. You know, I almost feel sorry for you, Reverend Davidson. Oh, I mean Dawson. That other fellow, he was a minister, a lecturer's minister in a play called Rain. Wasn't that the name of the play, Reverend? Yes, Dawson? and I don't like the comparison. All well, the world's a stage and all the men... That's and enough, Holly. And I've had enough, too. Look, I don't care if you're flying solo or whether you're in cahoots with my mother. All I want is for you to leave me alone and get out of my way. Perhaps my timing is bad. I'll wait until you calm down. Yeah. How about a lifetime, Reverend? A lot sooner than that, Holly. Before you ruin your life for good. That is my pleasure. Because that's all I want from life. A little bit of happiness. Let me help you, Holly. Why, how do you mean that, Reverend? You know where I'll be when you're ready to apologize. What's wrong? 
hung with Reverend Dawson. He just passed me on the stairs and barely acknowledged me. He was white as a sheet, angry as a... What's wrong? You're crying. It's the story of my life. Reverend Dawson and I had a rumble. Well, from the looks of things and the sound of it, it seems more like a revolution. The modern age, youth against the good old establishment. Except that Reverend Dawson isn't that old. And in reality, you're not that rebellious. My mother will cut out your tongue. Holly, may I offer you a piece of advice? Now, you've joined the Help Holly Club. Help, yes. Not hurt. Keto, could you find Reverend Dawson for me, please? You're calling a revival meeting, Doctor? I warn you, the Reverend's tune is always out of key. So you have an ear for music, have you? Oh, I've had it up to here with soap suds and sympathy. Holly, if you would just really listen, instead of just hearing, you know, you might benefit. I'd better cool it if the Reverend's coming. Run, run, run. Is that your solution? You can talk to me. I'll listen. Well, what it boils down to is me, my mother, money. With Matt Dawson as the middleman. I couldn't help hearing that, Holly. You know that an inheritance is a family matter. And that excludes me, understand? And I exclude you. You understand? She has her problems, doesn't she, Reverend? This house abounds with them, Doctor. Oh, I know. You're here for the service, aren't you? Mrs. Desmond, hmm. yes. If I decide to stay and perform it. You really think you have a choice? Well, that decision is mine. To me, a woman whose heart stopped beating a matter of minutes before she was frozen is still quite dead. But not to Jean-Paul, Reverend. He thinks that Erica is still alive. By all religious concepts, the soul has fled the body. It only remains for God to decide whether a miracle is deserving here. You know, it seems that Jean-Paul considers himself as powerful as God. But all miracles aside, Reverend, I'm not sure I really understand the meaning of the word soul. Although, medically speaking, I'm certain that my sister is dead. Perhaps we should dedicate ourselves to convincing your brother-in-law of that. You're a doctor. Now, you certainly should be able to show him that cryonics is too new, too uncertain, and who knows, may never work. On the other hand, it may someday. Saving souls. Seems we're both in the same business. Look, I asked you whether you thought you had a choice. Whether you realize it or not, the answer is no. About the service? Why? Once you set foot on this island of Maljardin, you become a prisoner here. But Mr. Desmond asked me to come, and not by force. Yes, but you'll be detained if you try to leave. Have you tried? And you were prevented from going? Only Quito and Jean-Paul himself can maneuver a boat in that treacherous channel. For anyone else, it's certain death. So, we're all guests here until Jean-Paul decides otherwise. Oh, Quito, I certainly wouldn't tussle with. But suppose we speak with Raxel. Raxel is as loyal to her master as you are to God. But if we can prove to her that what he is doing is wrong, certainly it's worth a try. I have tried. But you see for yourself. Perhaps these tarot cards will sway her. 
Vanjie Abbott asked me to deliver them. Perhaps if I spoke to Raxel alone. You rang, Doctor? Reverend Dawson has a message for you. Now, if you'll excuse me. A message? From whom? Evangeline Abbott. Are they familiar? Eternal. It's been a long, long time. And the message? She said that you should use them for everyone's good. Do I make myself clear? Too clear. And yet you, a man of God, would... How much did the daughter of the conjure man tell you, sir? Enough to let me know that only you can help all of us here. Dark and ancient magics rear up again. Vanjie says you are surrounded by them. There is no other way. Then you'll do as she asked. Oh, there is one other thing. She said the third hour is best for her. Does that mean anything to you? Everything. I, too, must know what and who it is that roams the corridors of this house or the paths on Maljada. Sounds as though you're talking of ghosts. Three hundred years ago, that man died. But did he really? After three hundred years, I would say most assuredly, yes. The power of the great serpent made him an eternal prisoner until the master interfered. The great serpent? My belief as you have yours. And your master set free a 300-year-old man? Well, somebody rodents here. The master found a conjure doll with a pin driven through its head. He withdrew the pin. Look, Belvoir Demon. It must be he who walks. It must be. Impossible. You believe in God. But what about his work? I trust the tarot cards. But what about the words of the woman who beats them? I'm a messenger, not a convert. One conjure doll, one silver pin. If that pin were still driven into that doll's head, we would all be safe. Raxel, that is witchcraft. Do you feel safe, Reverend? I am sorry to keep you so long, Reverend Dawson. I had many things to say to Quito. He has been hurt. Ah, I thought he was as impervious to pain as the Rock of Gibraltar. No, I don't mean physically. He overheard some of our earlier conversation. In the crypt? I didn't see him. Well, that is his lodging place. Yes, that's where he is happiest, close to my ancestors and his beliefs. Now look, about tomorrow, ashes to ashes, etc. Have you prepared your text for the service? No. Well, that is the least of it. I'm not even sure whether or not I can conduct the service. Still undecided. Now, look, how can I persuade you? I am undecided about you too, Mr. Desmond. I have heard some very strange things. In due time, Reverend, things will adjust themselves. Now, look, I am not accustomed to being questioned. Ordinarily, I ask, and others do. And what you are asking me to do is to pay lip service to a sacrilege. We both believe in immortality. You in the soul, I in the body. Erica's sister wants this service. Out of consideration for Alison's feelings, I agreed. Now, you will do it my way or there will be no service at all. Quito, secure the boats. There will be no further trips to the main island and no trips even for mail until a matter between the Reverend and his conscience is resolved. Now, I will be in my room until you are ready. What kind of a man are you? A man who is in love, Reverend. You've met them before. You know love, of course. You, a minister, are permitted, are you not? After marriage, certainly. Erica and I are man and wife. We took the marriage vows. Now, I want to share with her my life. That is part of the marriage vow. Unto death do us part. That is also in the ceremony. Events have been rewritten and events have rewritten the pages of history. Such events are promulgated by circumstances and by people. We are now facing an unusual event. And a very strange man. And you 
are a very stubborn one. But a determined one, Mr. Desmond. No more determined than I, Reverend. Hear me. I know the dangers. If you are afraid, go stand within the protection of the pentagram. In the name of Taro, I bid you follow the true path and read with me, conjure man, before we are all doomed. Exactly as Raxel spelled them from Marjardin. Read them to me before I die, my daughter. The truth about Jean-Paul Desmond and all who surround him must be known, as must the truth be known about the devil. The Knight of Pentacles sits upon the right hand of the Ace of Cups. The Queen of Cups is upon her left. The King of Scepters lies upon the Queen and the Ace. Reversed? Yes. And so is the Ten of Swords shadowing both the Ace and the Knight. And here lies the Nine of Swords linked to all? That is correct. And this, Lamar, the foolish one, no? Yes, your hand holds Lamar, the symbol of divine folly, the perfected spirit approaching the one. This is the minister, Matthew Dawson. He is already on the island to conduct a burial service for Jean-Paul Desmond's wife. The one who lies frozen against the resurrection. In the cryonics capsule. But you taught me that death is a matter of decided by the one. Whenever man meddles in things spiritual, he risks bringing upon himself the winds of icy retribution and the evil fires of hell. And you see what the cards are telling us? I've been seeing it for the last week, Father. And you must see that the King of Scepters is no longer Jean-Paul Desmond. He is another. The one who brings harm to the innocent child and to the sister of the wife of Jean-Paul Desmond. More than harm. Death? Thank God for the fool. But he will need help. We must get the Knight of Coins to the island. Tell me how. If there is no other way, we must use levitation. Only a believer can be moved. Put on the robe. You will have power. 
I command you. I must contact Rex. Daughter of priestesses, keeper of the flame, it is I, conjure man, calling from the inner core. Yes, O oh, powerful one. No more, no more. The serpent is calling me home. No, not yet, not yet. The devil is loose again.